So, good evening everybody and welcome to the first ever BD live web streaming. Uh, we welcome you all this evening and obviously the hot topic uh, on the floor tonight is the new competition structure. Now, obviously you should hopefully all be aware that on the 1st of December, the, uh, the new competition structure which we have been working on for the past two years will come into effect. Uh, and today, early, earlier on this, uh, this morning, we sent everybody out the emails for uh, breaking down your points uh, for both yourself and your horses uh, to help you calculate where you are in the new structure. Now, obviously, uh, the massive uh, amount of emails that have actually had to go out today, uh, they are still trickling out uh, through our, our servers. Uh, so some of you actually might not have received them. Um, so don't panic. Um, they should be with you uh, ever so shortly, but hopefully uh, most of you have, have got yours. So this evening, uh, what we want to do is try and talk you through uh, some of the principles of, of the new system uh, and help everybody try to understand uh, how they fit into the system. Now, one of the main first things that we've had uh, today uh, is around when uh, looking at your emails is everyone was assuming that we were going to tell you exactly what section that you were in. Now that actually for us is actually an impossible thing to do because actually lots of people will be eligible for lots of different sections. So in the new structure, one of the main things that you do have is choice. Now previously you didn't have that. Your rider group dictated where you went, but actually in the new structure, depending on what your planned career path is, um, that will dictate what section you go in. So regardless of what your points uh, that you've got in front of you, actually it's your career path and your chosen goal which will dictate what section you go in as opposed to what your points say you are. Okay, so what I thought I'd do is just start off uh, with the, the basic principles of, of the conversions of what is different to the current structure, putting it into the new structure. Okay, so we start off with rider groups. Now, rider groups in the new structure are very, very different to what they are currently. So as you know, currently your, your rider group is based on, on the, uh, your level of competition uh, and that dictates whether you go into an open or restricted section. Now in the new structure, the rider groups actually become very cosmetic and actually don't dictate where you are in the system. All the rider groups are in the new system are as a recognition of your level of achievement. Now what we've done is actually we've applied a 10 year uh, uh, working calculation of those rider groups. So the points that you've achieved in the current and preceding 10 calendar years is what will dictate your rider group. Now that is separate to eligibility. So that is just purely on your rider group. Now, some of you will actually have realized that actually you've moved down or moved up a rider group, depending on what you are. Now, not to panic in that, because those people who are in rider groups eight to three, actually you're all effectively the same level of person because that's where you will go in the system. It's only those rider groups one and two where it has an absolute effect on their eligibility. So the rider groups ones and twos, those are people who have competed in CDIs internationally and in at home. Uh, and of competing uh, into two Grand Prix and also at the FEI levels at the national championships. Now those people are the groups of riders that we have determined that regardless of what horse that they're sat on, they have to ride in the gold section. They have achieved a level of ability in their, in their careers which dictates that they are able to train whatever horse they're sat on uh, and, and we will make them go in, in, in the gold section. The all the other riders, your rider group actually doesn't affect where you're going in the system. It is the level of points that both you and your horse have won that actually dictate where you are. Okay. So then we will move on to the horse side of things. So as you'll have seen uh, from your breakdown of your points, that the horses now show your breakdown of points at every different level. So at the, currently as you stand, you will actually have an overall points total. So I'm going to use Vallegro uh, as the example. Now, as it currently stands, Vallegro has 181 points, which puts him as an elementary horse. Now, as we know, as world European and Olympic champion, that is not reflective of his level of ability. 
and that is simply because he has only ever competed a limited amount of times nationally uh, and currently we don't allocate points to international competitions. Now that all changes in the new system. So in the new system we start to allocate points to international uh, competitions and that is going to be backdated retrospectively across anybody that has competed in an international including those in ponies, juniors and young riders. So for some people who ha uh, previously had a lower number of points they will actually see their points uh, levels skyrocket. Now I'm going to use uh, Vallegro as the current example, uh, currently has 181 points under the new structure when we converted his points including all his CDI points he actually goes up to 930 something odd points in total uh, for, for his career which actually is much more reflective of what that horse's level of performance is. So then we start to, uh, once you start to break down all your points into all the individual levels um, that will then start, start to help you place where each horse is in each section. Now there are, there are obviously uh, those horses that have a, a full competing record uh, which have accumulated points over a number of years which are, they will be the bog standard ones. You then get three other different types of horses. You have your imported horses, your assessed horses and your downgraded horses. Now I'm going to start with downgraded uh, and for this one I will use the example of Mr President. Uh, Mr President has thousand plus points he was then when he retired from top level competition he actually downgraded for a group 8 rider and came back down to 50 points so when he came back to 50 that horse didn't actually represent what his level of ability was now because of the way that the new competition competition structure works actually the number of points won at each individual level is the most important thing not the overall points total so in the new structure we can just lift the downgraded, the previously downgraded horses off and they will revert back to their original number of points and that was what will then place them in the individual sections. So whereas um, Mr President's record currently shows him as having 50 something points he will actually go back to his thousand points but that will then break down into all the individual levels that he's won them. Okay so then we move on to those imported horses. Now imported horses uh, is, is slightly trickier um, because as you know at the moment we uh, allocate a set number of points uh, when a horse is imported into the country dependent on its age. So that basically assumes that those horses have had a particular level of ability when they've been competing abroad. Now it's an assumption rather than fact okay so and it's there as a protection um, because historically the horses that tended to come in from the European countries tended to have been training or competing abroad and had achieved a high level of experience so we needed a mechanism to put them in the appropriate place in our structure. Now under the new structure we are maintaining those principles so we will look at um, the horse's age on import and then we will allocate that horse 15 points at each level according to the age that it was imported. Now there are some uh, uh, missing pieces of information on our systems so where we perhaps have horses that are coming from a foreign or declared that they're from a foreign country but actually we don't have their import date we've made some assumptions on uh, and, and put those horses in at the level of where they are showing as their competition record currently puts them uh, there are other horses that uh, we've looked at their age on import uh, and, and allocated those points now we've already had some queries in since we sent out the, the emails today uh, from people saying that actually my horse wasn't imported or it was imported at a different age. Now if you have queries like that please don't panic and just drop us a line at the feedback at britishdressage.co.uk uh, email address and we will be able to uh, make some adjustments at the on the systems at this end. So what we've sent you today with no doubt there will be some errors in the data um, and that is purely because of the, uh, the, the missing pieces of information which dictate where those, uh, those horse points get allocated. But we can rectify them, uh, so you just need to drop us that email and we will look and do, investigate those for you. Then we have our assessed horses. Now our assessed horses, these are horses that have come into the country 
uh, and have not been able to uh, prove to us one way or the other what their level of performance is. So that's where we, we have a selected panel of, of professionals uh, that will look at these horses and determine what level that horse is working to. So for example, you could get a nine-year-old that comes into the country. Previously, it would have been given 450 points because it would have assumed that it would be on a, as a PSG horse. But actually, then under the new structure, uh, uh, sorry, and when it's been assessed, actually, it may actually be only working at novice level. So we would then give it 125 points, which places it into, in, into novice. Now, obviously, the computer, actually, when we have the import date, saying it is a nine-year-old, will be telling us one thing, but we have the data of when it was assessed, and we will maintain that assessment on those horses. So where a horse has been assessed to a lower level, according, to, uh, separate from its age on import, that assessment will continue to stand. So that's where, because we've got the new uh, uh, rider groupings and hopefully uh, you'll all see that detail on your emails uh, and you'll see your breakdown of your points uh, which will help you start to place yourselves in the varying sections. So what I want to do now is we're going to move on and we're going to start talking about the sections themselves. So as you all know, we're moving away from having open and restricted sections. Now. What I want you to try and visualize in your heads is not trying to compare what was open and restricted and putting it into the new gold and silver and bronze. I want you to think that the new gold and silver and bronze is based on different principles. Okay, So basically, we've had to take the people that were in those previous sections and actually recategorize them uh, into, the, into the new sections. So. In essence, your bronze section is for those people who are truly new to a level, and that's both them and their horse. The people in the silver section are the people who are appropriate, uh, who can have actually gone on and achieved uh, a little bit more themselves as a rider, but actually they're bringing a new horse or a younger horse back down into that lower level. And then the people in your gold section are the people you're either going to have your more experienced riders with less experienced horses or you're going to have uh, your seasoned campaigners so the people who uh, are competing at novice level uh, uh, have no aspirations to to move up any higher but actually now can stay in that gold section forever day and more so what i want to do is i'm going to show you uh, a little diagram that just help might help uh, picture what we've got so at the moment, we've got our open and restricted sections. So the membership uh, is split into those two groups, and that is based on what you have done as a rider. Okay. So what we're going to do in the new system is we're going to take the bottom end of restricted, the top end of open, and split those off. And then the top end of what was restricted, the bottom end of open, will then merge together into one section. Now, when we initially uh, introduced this, there was a big fear that the silver section would be enormous. And actually, when we've gone back and done the stats, well, when we orig originally did the stats on this, it was actually quite fascinating that actually probably the bronze sections are actually going to be one of the largest. And if I put it into context, is that we've got around about 12,000 competing members in any one year, and about three, two, well, two and a half to 3,000 of those qualify for regionals every year. Then about another 6,000, including of those 2,500, qualify for area festivals, so achieving that 62%, which then leaves another 6,000 people who aren't qualifying for area festivals at their relative level. Those are the people who are actually going to be in those bronze sections. So if we move on to the, our, our next slide, this will actually give you a little bit more of, a, of an idea of what the principles around those sections are. So if you think of area festivals, now area festivals, the qualification for that is 62% at the lower levels, 60% at the higher levels. So the bronze section is essentially for those people who are achieving up to and including 62%. Those are the people who are new to that level, the horses are new to that level, and neither one of them has competed higher up. You then move to the silver section, and this is for people, or horse and rider combinations, who are achieving round about that 63 to 67% mark. 
So it's a broad spectrum of people, but these are horses who are absolutely of the level. So if you're using the example of novice, these are novice level horses at silver, but those riders could actually have gone up the level a little bit more. So you could have somebody who's ridden an advanced medium, but they're bringing their younger, greener horse back out in a level that is appropriate for that particular horse. Then you move to the gold section, and essentially this is for people who are scoring 68% plus. So if you are regularly scoring those scores, that is where we think you should be. And that's regardless of whether you are on a, uh, um, you're a more experienced rider with a less experienced horse, or whether you are that seasoned campaigner who has accumulated perhaps 150, 200 points only at novice level. And then you can stay in that section forever day and more without needing to move up. Okay. The other query that we've had around the, uh, the 10 year rule um, is, and, and the schoolmaster rule is where somebody has uh, accumulated a, a, a number of experience over a number of years and then we start to look on what they've done in the last 10 years. So in terms of the eligibility for silver and gold, the eligibility for those sections is actually determined on what they have done in the current and preceding 10 calendar years. Because the bronze section is ultra protected for those people who are new to the sport or new to those levels, their eligibility is determined by all the results that we have recorded on that system. So say, for example, you've got a record spanning 15 years. Your rider group is actually going to only be based on what you've done in the last 10 years but your eligibility for those bronze sections is going to be based on everything. So for example, you could have been competing at advanced medium in 2002, which would put you as a more experienced rider. You actually might not then have done anything for the, le for the last 10, 11 years. So your rider group actually drops back down to an eight. But actually because of your experience previously, you've demonstrated that you can ride at those levels Therefore, you are not a bronze level rider. Those bronze level riders are people, and if you think of them on the true grassroots levels, that is what that bronze section is for. The silver section, again, is for those people who have gained a little more experience at that level. And then the gold section is for your really experienced combinations. So if we move on uh, and we just look at the career pathways. So as you've all have worked out, those people who are competing in bronze sections, their goal achievement is only to go to an area festival. And that is by dictation that actually we're determining that those people are the people who are scoring in the low end of the 60%. Uh, and that is where those people are aspirational to get to. They don't want to go to a regional, they only want to go to an area festival. If, however, you are eligible for bronze, but you feel that you're getting those percentages and those scores, and you want to go for regionals, absolutely you can. You then have to elect to go in the silver section, which if I come back to what we said at the beginning, is that we can't tell you exactly what section you should be in because you have choice. You could be eligible for bronze, but want to go for regionals. If you do that, you're saying to the us that actually you're a more experienced rider, you're getting more higher percentages, therefore you're going to elect to go in the silver section. If you do that, we're going to give you the grace of having two choices. You can either go on an area festival route, so you can go a higher level area festival, or you can go the regional route, so your, your bottom end of the regionals, effectively what would be regional restricted. And then you've got your gold route, which takes you directly to regionals, and that is your option there. Now, if you think on at the moment, somebody could be effectively be competing in area festival restricted but also the simultaneously be actually clocking up their percentages for regional restricted as well in the new structure that won't happen so those people who are purely going for area festivals and are eligible for those bronze sections who are inexperienced at that level they will have an environment for them now which is uh, competing like for like and the more experienced combinations have actually been moved out of that or will move out of that sections because you will no longer able to now go for your regionals from that bronze section. You're in the bronze, you're in the silver section 
and you've got that much more choice so you could be clocking up your your points in your uh, for your regionals you might not get them but actually because you've been competing in those silver sections you're actually able to still have your area festival route should you so wish and obviously this gold section is going to become quite interesting because you're going to get two lots of different types of people in that section okay we start to talk about the flow uh, of these these sections and I'm going to uh, move back uh, and just have a, a little perch uh, and we the, the flow of the section so the bronze section now this is for when you're out competing that you are accumulating between 1 and 50 points at that level okay so all the time you've got to keep remembering that you're accumulating points at individual levels as opposed to an overall points total so I'm going to use novice as the example so you're starting out and you're going to compete at novice and you decide that actually you do only just want to go for area festival which is great uh, and you start off competing you have then got your uh, your up to 1 to 50 points to stay in that bronze section when you hit 51 you would then be obliged to move over in the silver because that is saying that you have clocked up a relative amount of experience which we're saying to you now that you now have to move over into the silver section and be with a slightly more competitive group of people likewise you would then have another 50 points in the silver section so taking you up to 100 so when you click to 101 we would then ask you to move again over into the gold section now we also recognize that there are people who potentially could be clocking up large number of points but actually not achieving high percentages so the example I would give you is that you could have a horse and rider combination and they could be clocking up one point each time that they compete by achieving 60% it's going to take them a wee while to get those 50 points but actually at some point in time that they would and then they would get their 51 and they would have to go over into the silver section now what we've done and you'll see if you look on the tables in your rule book we've put in some percentage mechanisms now those mechanisms those allow those riders who are clocking up the points of the go away and achieving lower percentages to remain in the section which is appropriate for them so in the in the instance of the the bronze section and we use the novice as the example if you are not achieving 66 percent and you don't do that at all and you've gone over those 50 points for that bronze section we will allow you to stay in that section likewise when you move to the silver section if you go over the 100 points and you're not yet scoring that 67 percent five times we will allow you to stay in that silver section obviously once you start hitting those higher percentages then absolutely you will have to move over because you are then demonstrating that you are achieving those higher levels of, of, of uh, performance so essentially the gold silver and bronze is actually a recognition of people's performance more than anything and what we want to see is that bronze section absolutely being about looking after our grassroots riders that silver section being for that more broader and varied group of people and then that gold section ultimately for being in that that experienced uh, combination of horse and rider now obviously there are a, a few things um, that we need to add in to make some of these mechanisms possible uh, now at the moment obviously you know that we don't allocate points at prelim level uh, and from the 1st of December all, com all competitors that compete in prelim will start accruing points as per the normal scales uh, that currently are for novice elementary medium etc uh, and that will allow us to provide the flow of people through that prelim section Okay. Likewise, we also have uh, another slight anomaly where we've got advanced. Now, advanced is a non-level. It's that level that people use to, to gain that experience uh, and qualify for going up to PSG. Now, the advanced points actually don't count towards any of your grading at all. Um, so you, we will still allocate them. They'll still sat on your record every time you compete, but actually they don't affect anything. So when you're looking at, particularly in that advanced medium level, when you're looking at points at the levels above we're not including those points that you've gained at advanced level in that um, calculation okay there are a couple of anomalies 
and this is purely and simply because of the way um, that we've had to overlay the current competition, the new competition structure on the current championship structure, uh, is that as you know, at each of the levels in each of the championships, there are two sections, an open and restricted, except for prelim. Now at prelim, there is only one section. Okay, so the mechanism that we've put in place is that if somebody is, uh, wants to go for their regionals at silver at prelim level, but actually fails to do that uh, and doesn't achieve the percentages required in the points, we will allow those points to be allowed to, uh, uh, to take them forward to an area festival um, so that we can, because uh, what the main thing is, is that we want to keep everybody with a goal in place. Now, in an ideal world, uh, we would have just been able to put in an extra section uh, at prelim and add that into the championships. Now, logistically, that sh sounds easy to do, but actually with the current constraints that we have with the current winter championships and the national championships, where the timetables are fully complete, actually it's not that easy just to drop in another section of 30 people because there physically isn't the space. Now, don't panic because we have a working group going on at the moment uh, who's specifically looking at all our championship series and they are going to be reviewing uh, all, all the needs of all the different groups of people and we will be looking at these going forward for 2017, 2018 and trying to introduce some new things uh, that will provide uh, opportunity for those areas where perhaps people are feeling that they, they haven't got enough goals to, to aim towards. Okay, so... Um, when we start to then look uh, at people's movement and flow through the system, and again, I come back to this element of choice, somebody could effectively uh, start off in the bronze section and follow the natural flow, which would be moving from bronze to silver to gold. They move up a level to elementary, go back to bronze, silver, gold, move up a level and go back. So every time you move up a level, you move back to the beginning, you accumulate your points at that level, and then you move up back to the beginning. Now, that is, not, that is the, uh, um, uh, the stereotypical pathway that you could, you could do, um, but actually we think that lots of people will snake their way through the, the varying levels um, because it's all about choice. So actually you might decide that you, you want to go for regionals at novice uh, and therefore you would be competing in the silver section if you're eligible. And actually, when you move up to elementary, actually, you might not want to go for uh, an area festival at elementary. You might want to go for elementary regionals. So you would then, again, elect to go into the silver section. Now, this is one of the, the big changes as well uh, that we've got going forward into the new structure is that, as you know, currently, we don't allow you to compete in two restricted sections. Uh, but under the new structure, if you qualify for novice silver, and you then go on to qualify for elementary silver, we will allow you to do them both in those sections. You will keep those qualifications and you won't be forced to move. The only time that you'll be asked to move your lower level to a gold section is in the odd occasion that you've perhaps qualified uh, yourself at elementary gold and also novice silver, we would make you move your novice over into the gold section because you can't compete in a lower section at a lower level because you've qualified at the higher section. Okay. We then also look on uh, things like uh, you've got your, where you've got your downgraded, uh, sorry, not downgraded, your horses that have gone on uh, and uh, accumulated a uh, more experience. So this is uh, coming back to rule 35, which is our schoolmaster rule. Okay, so this is a sort of a, a new rule that we've got uh, coming forward. So this is where we're, we're, we're recognising that the schoolmaster has real value within the sport. And lots of people will learn from those horses that have the experience, but themselves don't have that level of experience. So what we're saying is that, those, and this is where the, um, the downgraded horses um, revert back to their own individual level of points, and actually they don't need to have all those points stripped away. So you could take a horse, and we're gonna, I'll use an example of a horse that has accumulated points at elementary, medium, and advanced medium. A new rider takes on that horse, and in this instance, I'll use a, a, a rider that's competed at novice level, uh, and they come together as a new combination. 
Now, as that new combination come together, they have not competed at the higher levels on that horse. So they can bring that horse down to the, the section of their level. So you've got that novice level rider taking that more experienced horse and we will allow them to ride that horse in that novice silver section. Now the premise that we're allowing people to do that is that is until they gel as a combination. So that's where the 5% trigger comes in again. So they can bring that horse down into the silver section, but if they start scoring the regional percentages frequently, we're actually then going to say, right, you proved yourself as a combination, you're going to move over into the gold section. If that combination isn't gelling as a combination and they're, they're not achieving the, the, the scores that they would have hoped, uh, we will allow them to stay in that silver section until they have achieved those percentages. Okay. The other big difference this year, uh, next year, should I say, uh, is that training sections are going to disappear. Okay, so under the current structure, you have training sections where you can go out uh, and you can compete without accumulating points. The whole premise of the new structure is that every time you compete, you are well, you are allocated the points for those performances, and that dictates where you are in the system. Now, the gold section unlike where you are now, and I'm going to use the novice example again, is that if you get to 124 points at novice and you accumulate your 125th point, that is you out of novice. You then have to move up to elementary uh, and you are no longer able to compete. Now in the new structure with the new gold section, you're able to stay indefinitely in that gold section for as long as you like. There is no upper cap on that gold section. The only time that you would then start to need to move out of that gold section is if you as a combination start to then achieve more at the higher levels. So if you start finding yourself going to regionals uh, at say medium level, we will then say actually you're too good to be in that gold section as a combination uh, and then you would have to obviously then have to move up out of there. That's the only time that obviously then that would, would, would happen. Yeah, so we've got pony points. Okay, so at the moment, your, your ponies that compete in national competitions, like we're doing with the prelim points, all those, all those ponies that have been competing so far won't have points allocated against those pony competitions. Um, however, if they've been competing in CDIs, those points will respect, retrospectively go back and be allocated on them. Likewise, will junior and young rider CDI performances. From the 1st of December, like the prelim points, those points will then start to be awarded. Okay. The, uh, the, the mechanisms around people who then, uh, we're going to talk now a little bit about area festival and regional qualification, this has been another common uh, mis misunderstanding, is that the way you've got to think about in terms of qualification, we are going to, once you've achieved a qualification, we will not take it away from you but actually it's the order in which you achieve your qualifications which determine what you can do. So if you think along the lines of in the spring you get a winter regionals taking place, in the summer you get your summer regionals taking place and in the autumn you have your area festivals. Like it is now, if you compete at the regional, uh, in the regional levels in the winter or the summer, say at novice level, you would find yourself having to ride the area festivals at elementary level. Okay. If, on the scenario, you don't go to your regionals in the spring or the summer and you're purely heading for area festivals, you go to your novice area festival and you're good enough and you qualify for the area festival championship, you then simultaneously have been clocking up your point and you qualify for the winter regionals the following year. You then go to your winter regionals because you can. Now at the moment, if you then qualified for the winter championships at those regionals, we would then strip your area festival championship qualification away from you. We want to take, get away from that principle. You've worked hard to achieve those qualifications. We want to let you keep them. So in the new structure, you would qualify for your area festival at novice. You would then go to the winter regionals at novice and you potentially could get both qualifications for the Area Festival Championship and for the Winter Championships, and you will get to keep both. 
then when you go on, but the fact that you've then competed at a winter, a winter regional championship would force you to go elementary at area festival level that autumn. And that's where that anomaly comes in, is that when you compete at an area festival, you can then go to regional at the same level because it's in separate years and that's the only place when it can happen. You can't happen if you compete at your, win your regional in winters or summer first. Okay. Hopefully that will explain to you sort of why that, where, where that mechanism has come from. Then if we start, I want to now just touch a little bit on uh, some of the higher levels. So you, you've got your, when you're starting to compete at PSG uh, and into one, you're going to have the options of still competing uh, for your area festival qualification for those who are eligible. But likewise, if you go to a, a Premier League, you're going to be find yourself competing in a gold section. Now, the gold sections, they carry direct qualifications to the nationals because they take place at, PSG, uh, at Premier Leagues. But likewise, if you compete in those uh, Premier Leagues, like we do at Prelim, if you don't get a direct qualification, we will allow those points in that goal section to allow you to go to a regional at Inter 1 and PSG, uh, so that you can obviously go that route to try and get your qualification through to the Nationals. Okay. Uh, in terms of uh, being able to compete multiples of horses, uh, there are a lot, obviously, we know that there are lots of people out there who are competing uh, one, two, three, four, five horses. Um, essentially, you need to be working out your individual career paths for your in, uh, individual horses. So, in theory, you could, as a rider, uh, you could have one horse competing in novice silver, you could have another horse competing in elementary gold, you could have another horse then competing in advanced medium bronze depending on what your level of experience is. So each individual horse will be tailored to where it is in terms of its level ability, uh, rather than what you've done in the past and your rider group dictates where you are. In that essence, it becomes much fairer because the horses are then competing like for like um, and, and the riders are, are, are competing simultaneously as well. There are another couple of things um, that will dictate where people can go and what people can do. So, for example, uh, the, there are rules around uh, if you are a fellow of the BHS uh, or a BHSI or have competed in, in eventing, there are flags um, that you will be able to, to check yourself uh, in and that will then allocate your, your points to put you in the relative sections. But the main principles that we want to just try and get across to you this evening is around if you are competing in those bronze sections, we are saying to you that you are those riders who have uh, riders and horses who have not achieved le uh, performance at higher levels. If you're in those silver sections, you, as a rider, you can have achieved more at the higher levels, but the horses are all still of that level. And then when you move into the gold section, Obviously, that's when uh, you're going to find yourself up against more, more competitive combinations. Now, straight away, when we said about the, the, the gold being more open, uh, everyone was going to say, well, Charlotte and Vallegro could be competing in a novice gold section. Absolutely no, they couldn't. They have performed up the levels. Therefore, they are restricted to what they can do and how far they can come back down. So once the more you achieve up, you go aside. And then the more you achieve once you get to the goal sections will keep you moving up. Okay. So we hope that that has uh, given you uh, a bit of an insight into how the system works and the mechanisms that trigger you uh, through the systems. Now, we know that everyone's going to have some burning questions. Uh, we've had some questions that have been emailed into us earlier on today, and we're going to try and answer a few of them now. Uh, to try and give you a bit of a, a flavour of the answers to the to, to, and, ha and to help you work out where you are. But again, I just want to reiterate that we, we are unable to physically tell you what section that you are in because potentially you could be eligible for a number of sections. So that person, for example, who uh, is eligible for a elementary bronze section is also eligible for elementary silver and elementary gold are actually depending on what their aspiration is and what their goal is, they can elect to go in any of those sections. So it's your choice as to which section you go in, but there are barriers, obviously, and performance uh, indicators to say which section that you can physically go in. 
going backwards. Okay. So uh, I've got my assistant Winnie with me, uh, and Winnie's going to read out the questions, and I'm hopefully going to try and get them right. <laughs> Okay, Paul, our first question this evening is from Valerie, and Valerie wants to know, if a rider downgraded to Group 8, how would the points earned on previous horses affect eligibility to ride in prelim and novice classes? Okay, so I'm guessing in this scenario um, that this rider has been uh, under the new way of, down group, uh, sorry, of reassessing the grouping of riders, maybe has previously competed at a higher level pre the 10 year period and has since then gone back down to a group eight now in terms of what she can do if depending on the levels that she was competing at before that 10 year period um, will dictate what she can do so in those bronze sections you have to take into consideration what you have done at any point in time so if for example pre that 10 year period you had been competing in elementary medium advanced medium that does not automatically give you the right to come back down and start competing in prelim bronze. Uh, you can, however, in the, after that 10-year period, come back into the silver section uh, on those horses, but you've already determined yourself as a rider uh, not to be a bronze level rider. Therefore, we'll allow you to come back down to the silver section, uh, but not into those bronze sections. Okay, our next one is around um, regional qualifications from Megan. And Megan asks, if a combination qualify for summer regionals at s in a silver section and then go on to get over 100 points at that level and have got their five scores over the percentage, will they have to compete in the regional championship in the gold section? The answer to that question is no. They would have achieved the qualification in the silver section. Because they have achieved the qualification in the silver section and were eligible, they will maintain that qualification they can then subsequently upgrade and move out of the section, but because they were eligible when they qualified, that is what they will keep. Okay, our next one comes from Sue, and you've sort of covered this one in the presentation, but it's worth reiterating the point. And Sue asks, what happens to horses that have been previously downgraded regarding the number of points under the new system? Okay, so a previously downgraded horse, so again, we can, we can use a different example. A horse might have accumulated a, a round 200 points, uh, and then a Group 8 rider then takes that horse on, and we will then take a whole chunk of those points off and allow it to come back down to 45. Uh, in the new structure, that downgrade effectively comes off, and that horse gets reallocated the points uh, that it would do at the varying levels. Now, the important thing to remember here, and is the difference, is that the way it's currently done, it, that we need to do the downgrade to allow that horse to come back down to a level where that rider wants to compete it. In the new structure, we have the mechanism for that to happen without the downgrade being there, because that rider can ride that horse in the gold section because um, we will allow those higher level horses with higher level points to be in that section. So there is, there, is no, there is no need to have that downgrade on there because the, horse will com the rider can compete that horse where they want it to. Uh, then we have two questions from Judy. The first one is, um, at what time do you determine eligibility to enter a class? Either the time you make the entry or the close of entries for a particular show. Okay. Same as it is now, the eligibility is calculated as per the close of entries for that particular competition. So you have to be eligible at the close of entry date for that competition. And again, something we've covered but probably worth emphasising the point. Um, can you lose eligibility for an area festival or regional champs once it has been obtained? Again, no. Once you achieve a qualification, uh, you get to keep that qualification. Now, obviously, once you start to go on and as a combination, you start to go on and do well at regionals and you move on to national championships and winter championships, you then start to appear in the, the top percentage of those horse and rider competitions at that level in the country. Now, if you are at a national championships, whether that be winter or, or, or summer, uh, you, you're at the top of the tree at that level. Uh, therefore, we are going to then start to make you move out of sections. So say, for example, you get to the national championships in the silver novice section, uh, and you then happen to do particularly well in that novice silver. The following year, we're absolutely going to make you go gold because you have already dictated to us that you are in the cream of the crop at that level, 
and absolutely you should therefore be competing in a, in a higher level. So I think uh, one of the things that we just want to try and, uh, to get across is that there are lots of people out there that perhaps lack um, uh, confidence. And I, and I think the, the one thing that in talking to people um, is where people um, uh, think they should be competing is very different to where actually what their performances tell us they should be competing. So quite often people uh, are telling us that they want, they feel they should be in the bronze uh, section or perhaps in the silver section, but actually quite often they're achieving percentages regularly in excess of 68%. Now if they're achieving those percentages, then absolutely they, they need, they're going to be accruing uh, higher points uh, and they're going to be moving over into that gold section quite quickly. So it's all about sort of moving people around, protecting those people who are, who are achieving low percentages, moving people along uh, who are achieving the higher percentages uh, and making those sections much, much fairer. So I hope you uh, uh, have found this uh, informative this evening. Now, obviously, we know that you're going to have lots of qu questions and queries uh, in the coming weeks. Uh, and we have a dedicated email, uh, which is feedback at britishdressage.co.uk. Now, if uh, you have any questions regarding your points that you've been allocated or, or in the new conversion, or, or have any questions about uh, difficulties working out where you've uh, you, can, you sit within the structure, then obviously please don't hesitate to use the feedback email. Now we would really appreciate it, unless you get really, really stuck, that you don't phone into the office, um, because at this time of year we're obviously trying to calculate all our winter uh, qualifications because we're at the end of the winter qualifying period. Now those emails are obviously going to be going out shortly as well, uh, and again those will be going out in batches. Uh, so if you don't receive your email immediately, then please do not panic and please do not call into the office. If you haven't received it by the 14th of December, then contact us because then we can obviously find out where it is. But between the middle of next week and the 14th of December, that will be the period when those emails start going out. And as I say, they do go out in batches, so please don't panic. Now, lastly, these are the two most important documents that you can have. So what we really like you to do is to actually print off your emails so you've got your horse points and your rider points yourself and turn to the, uh, the tables starting on page 25 of your rule book. That should help you determine what you are eligible for within the new competition structure. But as I said earlier, it is your end goal which will determine what section that you want to go into. And it's giving you, the members, that flexibility of choice. And that's what you deserve. So again, if you have any questions or queries, fire them on an email to us. We hope you've enjoyed the presentation uh, and we will see you out and about very shortly. Good evening.